Real relationships, real conversations. This is who we are. This is couples connect. Real relationships, real conversations. This is who we are. This is Couples Connect. What's going on, everybody? This is Couples Connect. My name is Akita. And I'm Tisha. And today's topic, we're talking about setting unrealistic expectations. Exactly. For your marriage, right? Um, I think we all come to marriage with different expectations, right? Mm -hmm. Whether we want to or not, um, we definitely come with some expectations. Some of the yeah. common things that we might talk about is like, who's going to do the dishes? Who's going to, you know, cook meals? How many times are you going to have sex? How are these things going to look going forward, right? We definitely have expectations that we might not communicate all the time. Yeah. And I, I think it's, it's a culmination of everything that we've experienced growing up, uh, different, you know, parts of our childhood, our adulthood, even our teenage years. And we just, it's its really, I mean, they are expectations, but it's based off of things that we've experienced. You know what I right, mean? Right, right. So when you're coming together with your spouse or someone in a relationship, you have certain things that you're used to. You have certain things that you've seen, whether you've seen your parents do or your mom or your dad or your brothers, sisters, and you just think that those things are the way it's supposed to be. Or how about TV? Because- that too, house, yeah. It was a single parent house. So I didn't see like male interaction. Mm -hmm. So all I saw was like the Cosby's, um, a different world, but I guess it's not really like a marriage couple. Martin and Gina. Yeah. That was, like yeah. <laughs> that was a big one for me. Like I grew up on them and like I envisioned like, oh, my marriage is going to be like that. We're going to joke all the time. We're going to, but it's not like that. Unrealistic. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like that. No. Expectations. Um, so what kind of expectations did you come to the marriage with? Um, one thing, well, I'm you know, blessed to have um, both my parents being married for a very long time. Um, and they've been through a lot together. My dad, you know, recently passed, not recently, but like two years ago, he passed, uh, which is, I guess, still recent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, but I grew up watching my parents love on each other. And um, they were with together all the time. They went everywhere together. And, you know, I was the youngest of three boys. So I was with them everywhere they went. So I got firsthand look at how they interact with, interacted with each other um, and just the way that they were. So I kind of like expected to have that same thing with my marriage, you know, to be. So how what, were they? Well, they they were they were uh they would love on each other, but they would do like this marriage like back and forth back and forth, you know, like the playful banter and the the bickering, but I you know I love you type of thing. When you've been married for that long, you know, you find some things to complain about. But the way they did it was like out of love, you know what I mean? And even if they had dis disagreements, they can come back uh and, and act like nothing, you know, happened or whatever. Yeah. So I think that that's interesting that you bring that up because for us, I think the playful, I don't really consider it playful banter. Like mm -hmm. I consider it like going back and forth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think that that, that makes it, um, has it made it interesting. Yeah. yeah. It has. Yeah. It, yeah. So let's, <laughs> what are some of your expectations with that? I guess that combats or, you know, is different from the way I view it. What the playful banter? Or just like marriage in general, relationships. Um, how was, do you see a How do you see a marriage? Well, coming into our marriage, I think I definitely. Um, I don't know. I think I definitely had an issue with dependency. I think being dependent, I kind of just was doing a lot of stuff on my own, and so I think I kind of carried that in, and I guess the expectation was not that you might want to be included in things. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Loner. You're <laughs> definitely a loner. Just, well, okay. So to go to your thing, it definitely was not doing everything together, um, you know, all the time. It was kind of like we do some things together and then I do a, a lot of things by myself. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm glad you, you clarified that. <laughs> you do a lot of things by yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, that makes sense, too, because like you said, you grew up um, by your, you know, as far as being a child, you grew up by yourself, which is you and your mom. 
and you didn't really have to like get approval for for things because you didn't have to like share things with other people um and i think i also made being an only child being a latchkey kid mm -hmm. i also made decisions on my own like i didn't have to Consult. necessarily check in on my mom right it yeah. was like okay you're kind of here make the choice what are you gonna do and so yeah that just i think it, it just made me really independent at a at a younger age mm -hmm. um and i guess more self-reliant and not reliance on a man <laughs> <laughs> i was trying to think of a nice way to say it yeah um so then i okay so as we're talking about it so then i think that it made my expectations almost like um like so what is the benefit right so now now it makes it like the part like so what are you doing that i can't do mm -hmm. or i don't want to do so, or, or can't do or, or can't do <laughs> yeah. right like physically i just right. can't do so then i think that that expectation was like pretty high yeah and what was that for you how was that for you with realizing those things that oh you know i actually do need him for some things you know it's not i can't be this loner like i i need help with stuff um coming you, to that realization how how, how was that did i you? come to that realization how did I come to it or? Um, how did you come to it? And how was that experience of coming to that realization? Like, was it humbling for you? Was it hard for you to um, accept? Like, how did you? So I think, I think that I first had to come to the place where just as an individual, I realized that self-reliance isn't God's plan for us, mm -hmm. period, right? So like, the whole thing about being a believer is that you depend upon God. And so I think I had to learn that dependency, like self-reliance is not this thing that you should just be happy about, that you're just like, I'm relying on anyone but myself, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then I think I went from there to the phase of like, we can do more together. And, and I think being able to see your gifts and things that I don't necessarily have. Mm -hmm. And so then I think that that kind of helped. I began to see how our differences could balance me out, which made me, I don't want to say dependent, but like made me, put me in a better space. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. Am I saying it? I hope that you guys are getting it in YouTube land. Yeah. No, I, I really like the, the part you said about we can do more together and um there was like some african proverb or something i can't remember the actual proverb but basically it's saying that you know you can do a lot on your own right but right. you can do more together right um and i think that that is very um that's key in marriages in general because there's a lot of stuff we could do on our own um but together and when you get married you become one so having that mindset of we can do this together is actually aligning yourself with the word, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And and following in the path that he has called you to follow in. Um, but I think it's so funny how you say, oh, I'm a loner. I don't need anybody to do anything. But when we were dating, you asked me to get them garbage bags. Because I could not do it. it exactly. Was heavy. Exactly. It was heavy. So I said, I said the things that I could not do. Uh -huh. um, how does that feel? Does it like when you gotta ask me for stuff or is that painful for you it's annoying <laughs> <laughs> it is not no you know what i think it's it's not painful to ask for things i think what mm -hmm. having a like self-reliant self-dependent personality it's not so much the ask for me i think it's more the expectation that you'll already know yeah right so like if if i'm if i'm self-reliant and dependent I'm thinking of all the things that that need to happen like I'm thinking about I gotta do this I gotta get this I gotta get that done so because that's the way I think I typically think that other people think that way mm -hmm. like like that wouldn't be rocket science to know that I'm gonna need help with the bags right mm -hmm. so I think that what happens is I don't necessarily I may not always communicate I need help with the bag because I'm thinking in my mind the bags are here you would see that mm -hmm. <laughs> with the bags so did that answer your question? Um, somewhere. It's about asking. I don't have a problem asking you to do stuff. Uh huh. 
You feel like I have a problem asking you to do no, something? No, I'm just saying, based off of what you're saying now, you're like, I'm a loner. I don't, I'm self-sufficient, which I think is, I, you, I think. You disagree? No, I, I do. I no. do agree. I'm just saying, how does it, is it painful for you when you do have to ask? Like, is it something that. It's not painful. Oh, okay. Got you. Because, I mean, it gives me a chance to be like, you know, knight in shining armor and be like, you know, this is this is my moment right here. I get to do this, do that and the other. So um, it feels good for me. Okay. It feels good for me <laughs> personally. But <it's> <laughs> well, I guess I'll ask more. Yeah. <laughs> Again, I don't think it's not the ask. I think it's sometimes I don't realize that I need the help mm -hmm. until later. Yeah. Because I've I've just been accustomed to figuring it out. So gotcha. I don't think it's necessarily to ask. I think sometimes it's just my level of self-awareness of mm -hmm. what I'm actually going to need until that happens. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let me let me ask you this then. What... It's like interview the uh, wife day. I didn't no. know. Okay, go ahead. We, you know, it was a back and forth, but okay. something something else came up. You asked, I answered. <laughs> um, so what, as far as like the challenges that people face, that couples face, when um, they are having these unrealistic expectations, what do you think is the cause of that? Like, why can't they work it out? Or why does it seem to get um, worse or? Because I think, so perfect example of what I said, I don't think that you always realize that it's an unrealistic expectation. Mm. You think that because you think a certain way, because you grew up a certain way, because it makes common sense to you, that it should therefore make common sense to the other person. And even not even them just also thinking a lot, a lot thinking like you, but them knowing you. And yeah. so I remember I used to say to you, like, you don't know me by now. Like you don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like mm -hmm. you're supposed to already know, like, come on now. She's gonna do this every day. She go get that drink every day. You know what I'm saying? So like certain things, I think expectations form because we assume that yeah. you either know it already or you should know it. And so therefore we don't communicate it because we feel like it's like a no brainer. Yeah. So communicating your needs is very important when it right. comes to expectations. Right. Because a lot of times, you know, I feel like couples have this uh, thing where, like you said, you're just supposed to read my mind or you should know already. And that creates like, you know, not, um, adhere to or uh, kept expectations. Um, and then you have a situation where people get have resentment because you didn't meet this expectation because you didn't do this for me. And now they're secretly holding this anger inside. Um, and then at the wrong time or the right time, you're like blowing up at the other person. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think, yeah, I agree. I think that also though with the person communicating what those expectations are, mm -hmm. I think they're, the other person also has to be intentional because yeah. I think you can get to a place where you know what their expectations are, but you're just like, well, they ain't asked me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I think that it's definitely a work, but again, the goal is you don't want to be out here arguing. You don't want to be out here upset mm -hmm. behind some some garbage that somebody yeah. didn't pick up. You know what I mean? And so... um I think just making sure that you're managing your expectations. And I, I believe that that starts with realizing that they're yours. Yeah. <laughs> they're not necessarily the other person. Yeah. Especially if you haven't communicated them. I think too, um, with that, managing your expectations and realizing that your expectations aren't um, always right. Like it's not like your expectations are right and the other persons are wrong. They're just your expectations. Right, right. You know what I mean? Because, you know, we can feel like if somebody doesn't meet it, then they're doing something wrong. And you and you straight can take that personal. Yeah. Um, I think yeah. maybe we should talk a little bit about the times when we have taken things personal. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, oh, I got to recall. And, and how resentment and bitterness has, has grown yes. as a result. Well, okay. Um, I can think of when we were like on this budget crunch and we were like, you know, we need to only spend this amount of money. And um, we, you know, we trying to save up and all this other type of stuff. Was that unrealistic expectations though, what you're about to say? Was it unrealistic expectations? I had a, uh, I had a, I had an expectation that wasn't. Was it unrealistic? 
What do you, I okay. Tell? okay, I'll let him tell the story. <laughs> I have an expectation that I can finish my <laughs> statement. How about that? It's unrealistic. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, I'm like all in agreement and I'm like, okay, how can we cut spending? You know what I mean? One thing that uh, we run into a lot is food. Like we spend a lot of money on food and I'm like, okay, I'm going to cook at home. I'm going to meal prep. <laughs> I'm going to have me, you know, beans and grilled chicken and spinach, you know, and that's it or rice or whatever the case may be. So I'm like going to work. I'm making these meal prep meals and then I come home from work after a hard day's work and I come into the bedroom and I look in the garbage can and what's in the garbage can? Tell them, honey, what's what, what in the garbage can? What is in the garbage can? Chick-fil-A. <laughs> Chick-fil-A. You got Wendy's. It was not what you exactly. You got it uh, was one thing. Panera Bread. It was it was Chick -fil -A. all these ordered things after we discussed. So all those I had an expectation that we was going to be doing such and such with these finances. Yes. And so to my defense, um, what happened was <laughs> what, what happened, happened was <laughs> we talked about how we weren't gonna be spending a certain amount of money, but like I knew that there was like five there was enough for the five dollar meal. <laughs> and I was already out, I was running around, I wasn't gonna be I there was no time to prep or cook. I had to eat. Mm -hmm. So I, I I got the meal. Yeah. So that went on for that did not go <laughs> That that went on for a little while. It no, did. he he brought it up for a lot of times, but it it didn't go on. He did well, honey. Yeah. <laughs> did you share? Did you communicate your expectations, or did you hold them? Um, I think that I did communicate them when I saw it in there in the very beginning. Because I I think I was like, "What is this?" But I mean, I, I said it, it like jokingly. Joking, I was right, jokingly right. saying it. Because I, I wanted to like, I didn't want to like come down on my wife and be like, why did you do this? Why did you eat? <laughs> why did you eat what was in the house already? We got food at home, as moms would say. But um, I felt like I did communicate it, but not maybe not in a way where... Not in a clear way. In a way where I was expressing that I, I wasn't happy about this. You know what I mean? And I had certain expectations. And because of that, it did go on for a little bit longer um listen we talk, we've been talking about this for years yeah because i was so I like for a little bit i longer. felt i felt like run amok bamboozled you know we didn't land on plymouth rock Plymouth rock sent, <laughs> landed on us I, I felt like like it was just like how could you do this to me you know but um yeah i mean i i kind of kept that in like i still remember that and i was like I can't not believe that. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't like I want my wife to eat and I want her to be healthy. I didn't it wasn't really about her getting the food. It was about us discussing one thing and then something different happened. So right. that that's for me. Okay. So how about you? And then I stopped doing that for you the did. record. Yeah. And we still talked about it over and over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that just shows how Something like that not being communicated, especially in like a timely fashion, can yeah. cause like a rift. And I think it's the little rifts unchecked or unresolved that cause bigger problems. Yeah, definitely the ones that go unchecked, you should watch out for because they mm -hmm. develop and fester and grow into other things that it's harder to backtrack from once you get to that place. You know, mm -hmm. plus you um, if you don't communicate it at all, you're really catching your spouse off guard because they didn't know this was an issue you know what i mean they weren't aware of this and by the time you actually talk to them is when you are overheated you're angry about it and it's already boiled over into something else and they're like whoa wait a minute like why didn't we talk about this in the beginning you know what i mean so so i think for me i'm realistic expectation um i don't think uh mm -hmm. i don't think that i Hmm. The thing that comes to mind, and I'm sure I have other ones that I could probably bring up if I really like concentrated on it. Yeah. But I think, I don't think, I mean, we had already had a conversation about the fact that I didn't really like to cook mm -hmm. and, or like clean. I'm not really domesticated. <clears throat> um, I don't, of course, want us to live in slop or anything like that, but just like, I'm not going to be the one like 
coming home cleaning every day, cleaning rooms and stuff, and got to have some spotless and stuff. So I think that for me, I unrealistically thought that this might not be a problem for him. <laughs> oh, I was wondering where you were going with that. <laughs> Even though we did communicate it, we did uh -huh. talk about it. Um, because I just don't, I, I never... I never have really cooked for the enjoyment of it. I've cooked for the necessity of it. And then having so many kids, it's just always been kind of like, check that off the list, check that off the list. Everybody ate, check it off the list. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that when I begin to hear that uh, food was an issue, that my rice and beans was a problem, <laughs> um, is when I begin to realize, oh, maybe he has some unrealistic expectations mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. of how this is going to work. Yeah, I mean, I I thought I did communicate it, but um, what? that what that I wanted some I'm home cooked food before we got married. Though I I, I never hit oh, the fact the re well, I don't think it was made clear that she didn't like to cook when we were dating. What I don't remember. I maybe I don't know. Maybe my in my age, I'm getting did I ever bad on my memory? But I don't. We, when we were dating, how many times did I actually cook for you? Well, I, I don't think that that was you. No, you cooked maybe like when we were dating occasionally for the kids. We talking like chicken nuggets. <laughs> That's it. Just <laughs> chicken nuggets. I couldn't think of anything else. But I, I mean, like when, we, when we were dating, it wasn't really like, oh, I'm going to come over so you can cook for me. We were going, we were going out. out right? Like we were going out on dates. I was trying to woo you. I mean, let me do my okay, we talk. Okay, that's my unrealistic expectation. What's that? The wooing has stopped. No, it has not. No, it has not. No. Nope. Okay. No, it has not. What has stopped is your acceptance <laughs> of the wooing. If we, no. but that, that's a whole nother no. episode. Okay, so yeah, we'll stick to the topic at hand. Yeah, you gotta allow the wooing to happen no. in order for. It I'm to... talking about planned nights. We do go out. No, we go out. You planning the night doesn't necessarily happen. Uh huh. I do plan. We. I mean, we we He's talk. He's probably about gonna it. edit this. <laughs> well, I mean, I feel like we're going off <laughs> yes, topic. Yes. So go ahead. Go ahead. Back that's so. a whole. We, we could talk about that in another video. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Oh, you were talking. About what? <laughs> expectations? Yeah. The cooking. Oh, no. So I don't think I never cooked. I thought that we had a conversation about how like that wasn't really um, my favorite thing. And especially because there was so many moving pieces with all the kids mm -hmm. doing all these different things. It just was like something that I checked off the list. I think we did talk about the fact that like my mom didn't really cook, you know, because she was she cooked on occasion, but she was working. So yeah. like I would heat up cream of wheat. Like it was not like food was never was not like a thing for me. TV dinners, I had a lot of TV dinners growing up. Um, raviolis on the stovetop. So like it was, and I think my mindset was like, "You hungry? Mm -hmm. Make some grits. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah. Heat up some waffles or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think that I don't know if that's. I guess it's unrealistic because I thought. That that wouldn't really matter, mm -hmm. um, and apparently he likes to eat food that's not <laughs> frozen. I, I do like to not starve. I like to not starve. Yes. Okay. So, <laughs> but I think I think that um, you know having that communication is so important, and I also think that it's important to realize that people are coming from a whole like other culture. There are even subcultures, you know um beyond like black people do this you know white people do this right. or whatever like there are subcultures under that that people grow up in a family of certain ways that they do things you know what i mean they go to schools that have a certain culture there they have friends that have developed certain cultures so you're bringing with you a whole person you know what i mean with a mm -hmm. whole set of beliefs and values and those types of things and you got to understand and respect the other person's values and beliefs and um, and see how they can coincide with yours. Right. You know? So it makes me want to ask you a question. I'm thinking that they're probably thinking, how have we been able to resolve the cooking thing? Um, I think for me, uh, it, I just came to the understanding like this is just, you know, you don't like to cook. 
you, you're good at it, but you just don't like to do it. So when you do do it, great. You know what I mean? When you don't, we just go order out. <laughs> we still going to eat. So, I mean, it's it's not really like, it's not a deal breaker for me. I, I think also relationships have to determine what are deal breakers. You know, that's not something I'm going to be like, well, I, we can't do this if you're not going to cook. You know, right, like right. It's, it's not that big of a deal for me. Right. And I think as a couple, you have to figure out what works for you. Mm -hmm. Right. So like if um, we can't judge that somebody else is always cooking or always doing stuff and, you know, I'm not always doing that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and I don't feel like, I mean, did we ever go into that space as far as cooking? I mean, I didn't. I never. No, I mean, <laughs> you, 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 you get creative, you know, like the expectation is not always on you to cook. Like some days I cook. Right. You know right. what I mean? Right. So it's a it's a back and forth. It's a give and take. Um, like we talked about in our other videos, it's it's a team effort. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So although I may have certain expectations, doesn't mean that all of them are going to be met. Mm -hmm. And I should be OK with that. And we've tried. And I, I will say, too, I've tried like when we've had these conversations, I have tried to make adjustments like there would be times where I would just make a crock pot things mm -hmm. and so that it would like last longer. Mm -hmm. um, and one time we were doing like HelloFresh. Yeah, And that was kind of coming in. So I've tried like different angles to kind of appease or like, I guess like meet halfway. Yeah. But now I think we're just at a place where we're kind of understanding, you know, that might not be Tisha's strength. You know what I mean? It is. Just, you, you're good at it. So I, don't, my, I wouldn't say that it's as, not a strength. Well, what it's what, not what, a passion. Well, but where my thing happens is it's like not necessarily cooking the food. Mm -hmm. It is having the right food that you need to cook, having the recipe, having to go shopping, to the grocery store. Yeah. like it's like all of those things that need to come into play. Because there'll be times I'm like, oh, I want a good, you know, sauteed chicken or whatever, whatever. Right. And then I get ready to come down here with chicken frozen because I didn't take the chicken out. Right. Somebody you ate know, the pasta that was going to use. The sauce. And then it's right. just like all thrown off. So yeah. I really need like all elements to be in play. Yeah. And there have been times where our life has been set up to where I could really, really like prep and prepare and make sure I have certain things. Mm -hmm. Like when I used to do like meal prep, but that has been very few. <laughs> and far in between. Far in between. Yeah. But no, so. I, I think it's, I think it's about communication. I think it's about understanding that we both have our own things that we're bringing to the table. It doesn't mean that I'm right and you're wrong or you're right and I'm wrong. But we just have to do two different point of views on, on certain things. So. Right, right. Yeah, so that's it's been a good talk. I feel like it was a little therapeutic. Mm -hmm. You got some <laughs> things off your chest, I can tell. I did, I did. Um, so guys, we absolutely would love for you to subscribe if you found this video of value yep. and share um, and like and do all the good things so that we can stay connected with you and even connect with other couples that you feel will benefit from this platform. Yep. so we will check y'all out next time. We love y'all and thank you for your support. See ya.